while I was trying to figure it out, God already worked it out. While I was trying to figure it out, God already worked it out for me. Hallelujah. No weapon, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Let's go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. I want to look at verses 9 through 14. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Amen. And the scripture reads, it says, And he spoke this parable unto certain which treated in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went into the temple to pray. Two men went into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Somebody just say a sinner. Yeah. I want you to know both of them were sinners. All right. All right. But I want you to look at the attitude of one and I want you to look at the attitude of the other. And the Pharisee stood. I want you to see what he did. He stood and prayed. Thus with himself. Now mind you, he wasn't praying to God. He was praying to himself. There's some prayers when you pray, don't think that it's going to get to heaven uh, he was praying to himself. Because I want you to look at his prayer. God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift so much of his eyes unto heaven. I want you to see, he coming in lowly, humble, humble. But smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth, humbleth himself shall be exalted. Amen? Praise God. I want to talk today about a thin line between pride and and humility. I want to talk about a thin line between pride and humility. Here in this text we have two men. One classified himself as a Pharisee. Jesus classified him as a Pharisee. He was supposed to be the religious he was supposed to be the one who was connected with God. He was supposed to be the one who, who, who knew of God. Then you had the other who was cl classified as a publican. He was supposed to be the one who was a sinner. He was a publican. Publicans were not liked in that time. But here they were both coming into the temple to pray. And both of them were sinners, but one in his prayer, uh, he, he, he prayed, number one, he prayed unto himself. And he began to look at other people's actions and begin to say, I'm just glad I'm not like this person. I'm just glad that I'm not like that person. Lord, in other words, uh, I, I'm righteous in myself. And he was a prideful man. Then you had the other one who knew who he was. He knew he was a sinner. He knew he sinned and falls short because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible said there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. The other one, he would not even look up to heaven, but he bowed his head down in humility. And he said, 
have mercy yes. on me. Yes. See, mercy is required when you know you're wrong. Yes. Mercy is required when you know you're not right. Yes. And he had the mindset to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Because he knew his condition. But here was the other one who thought he was, uh, he, he, he thought he was here. But he did not know that he was not humble. Even though he was coming into the house of prayer. When you come before God, you cannot come before God exalted. You must come to God in a humble state. One was coming prideful thinking that he was doing right. And the other one came humble, knowing his condition, knowing his state. A person can be doing something, thinking that they are 100% right, and find out that they are 100% wrong. Somebody hear me on this. So, it reminds me of a man who comes into the temple and he, he's the most humble person in the church, everybody say. He sits on the back row, never wants to sit in the front. And the church gives him an award and tells him that he's the humblest person in the church. They give him a certificate and they give him a lapel pin. And he receives both. And the next Sunday, he comes in. The next Sunday. And he, instead of sitting in the back, he sits on the front row. And he wears his lapel pin that man has given him. Immediately, as soon as they see him, they take the pin away. And they ask him to return his certificate. Why? Because... Humility and pride, there is a, between humility and pride, there's a thin line. Yes. People will say you are humble, but the moment you show <laughs> any sign of pride, humility is canceled out. Right. So uh, there's a thin line. People say there's a thin line between love and hate. I don't believe that. But I truly believe that there's a thin line between pride and humility. And today I want to talk to you about 12 ways to stay humble. I want to talk to you today about 12 ways to stay humble. 